Our world is pretty big. It's also flat. No, 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 no. It's definitely not flat. This is a fact-based education program. Anyway, land covers almost 150 million square kilometers. That is almost 5 million square kilometers. Wait, dang conspiracy guy threw me off my game. If we want to start understanding the world, it is helpful to break it into pieces or into different levels. Oh, did you say levels? <laughs> I can tell you. All sorts of stories about different levels. Levels under the earth, that is. No. Stop interrupting. Where was I? Oh yeah. The biggest pieces we can identify are the different continents of the world. Then, within each continent, we can identify distinct regions. In every region, you have different countries. Countries are usually broken into specific administrative divisions, like states, departments, provinces, or areas. Inside all of these areas, there are groups of people who live within a community. Inside a community are many families. Inside a family are individual persons. And inside a person, you find a microchip that the government doesn't want you to know about. But I know about it. <laughs> no. Once again, every word he says is a false. Some communities are very big, and we call those cities and metropolitan areas. And some are very small, like villages or towns. And some are invisible, but you can still smell them. Please stop talking. As we try to understand the world better, it is best to have a general sense of what these different levels of human society on Earth looks like. Let's start right with the biggest, continents. You know how many continents there are, right? Well, that depends on where you live and what you were taught. You see, here in the United States, we're taught in school that there are seven continents. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. But would it surprise you to know that not every country uses the seven continent model? When talking about human geography, there are some places in the world that use a four, five, or six continent model. And some of us know that there are 100 continents. But, you know, our model has been rejected as unscientific. Maybe he'll go away if we ignore him. Seriously though, a lot depends on how you define a continent. And like many things in the world, there's not one single definition for a continent that everyone agrees on. One common definition for a continent is a large continuous mass of land separated by expanses of water. See, large masses of land, like the big island of Hawaii. I mean, big's literally right in the name. Well, by large, we mean bigger than that usually. Where does it say that, huh? Do your research. Do your research! I'll wait. Anyway, that's the problem. See, look here. There clearly are some land masses that are separated by water, but there are also some places we think of as continents, but which are still connected by land. Take a look at a map. Europe and Asia aren't separated by water. Instead, the common dividing line is typically the Ural Mountains in Russia. What about North and South America? Or Africa and Asia for that matter? Both of those continent pairs are also connected by narrow strips of land in Panama and Egypt. Oh, really? Huh? Yeah, well I hear by demand that everybody pull their heads out of the sand and recognize the Panama Canal as a body of water between North and South America. You know what, while we're at it, same thing with the Suez Canal in Egypt. I mean, there's a lot of water there between Africa and Asia, huh? Can you deny it? I didn't think so. Again, a lot of water. Narrow, human-made waterways aren't exactly the same as oceans and seas. Yeah, maybe, but it's a lot more than I can drink in a week. Trust me, I've tried. Okay. Also, what about islands? Australia is usually considered to be a continent because of its size. But what about other islands of the Pacific? New Zealand, Tonga, Fiji, and more. Are they part of a continent or not? Some people try to use different names for a larger Pacific continent, calling the continent Australasia, 
or simply the Pacific Islands. But of course, a bunch of islands don't fit the common definition of continent being a large landmass. And that is why some don't consider Antarctica as a continent either. Not only is it not permanently inhabited, it isn't a solid landmass either. If all the ice caps on Antarctica were to melt away, we'd see that Antarctica is actually much smaller than the continuous landmass we usually see on maps. So you see that defining a continent isn't really easy. This means that a continent is defined something more like this. A continent is usually a large mass of land that is ideally separated by a body of water. In other words, there's just about enough room for every place to identify a continent however they want. Thank you, and you're welcome. For that reason, English-speaking countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and many other countries in Western Europe, China, and some others say that there are seven continents. They justify splitting North and South America because they are only connected by a narrow strip of land, and they do the same thing for Africa and Asia. In Russia, Eastern Europe, and Japan, they agree with those other countries when it comes to splitting North and South America and Africa and Asia. But they don't see Asia and Europe as different continents, given that they have a very long common land border. Therefore, the countries of Europe and Asia are considered to be one giant continent called Eurasia. Many countries in Central and South America separate Asia and Europe but they don't view North America and South America as separate continents. Instead, America is a single continent, and the North or South is just a region of that continent. Have you ever seen the Olympic flag? Do you know why it has five rings? Yep, five rings to rule them all. No, they represent five continents. This model combines North and South America as one continent and doesn't count Antarctica because there's not a permanent human population living there. Plus, they don't allow penguins to participate in the Olympics. Never mind that they would literally rule over the entire bobsled racing competition. Watch out, Jamaica! Actually, I have a true story about Jamaican penguins and how they've learned to manipulate the ozone layer. No, you don't. Just no. And as for a four continent model, well, if North and South America are considered one continent and one landmass because they are connected by a strip of land that is Panama, then wouldn't Africa, Europe, and Asia all be one single landmass because they're connected by the Sinai Peninsula? Say hello to Afro Eurasia, the mega continent that's home to more than 85% of the world's population. And 85% of the world's sentient sock puppets. Whatever you say, dude. Identifying continents usually takes a weird mix of physical geography and human geography. For those who are strict about using physical geography, some suggest that instead of using these other models, we could base the continents on the tectonic plates of the world. There are seven major tectonic plates, and sometimes these line up with existing definitions. For example, Africa, South America, Australia, and Antarctica are all major plates, but in other areas, it is not quite so simple. One of the major plates is the Pacific Plate, which covers most of the Pacific Ocean, but has no major land masses. Europe and most of Asia are together as part of Eurasian Plate. But then you have India, which is part of its own plate, as well as the Middle East, which is on a separate plate called Arabian plate. And not all of North America fits on one plate either. Most of Central America and the Caribbean is part of a separate Caribbean plate. And part of the North American plate goes all the way past the North Pole and into parts of Russia. So on second thought, maybe tectonic plates are not the simplest way to define continents either. If you think tectonic plates are hard to understand, wait until I tell you about tectonic bowls. Sure, why not? Anyway, we could go on and on, 
depending on where you live and the context you use, you might believe that there are anywhere from four to perhaps 15 different continents. Going forward, we will use a seven continent model. But like many things in the world, remember that there is usually more than one right answer. Maybe we could just settle this over breakfast? A continental breakfast, you get it? Hey, did you know that there was no such thing as breakfast until egg farmers took over the US Department of Agriculture? True story. <sighs> Never mind. Everything you are learning about geography in this video is wrong. There's no such thing as geography. The truth is that we're all in a simulation. It's like giant aquariums where instead of water we have air, and instead of plastic plants we have wooden plants. Anyway, if you feel like you're learning something, then guess what? You're an idiot. You're just fooling yourself. So go to YouTube, do real research, get real information, stop being boring. Facts are boring. Yeah, maybe they make you smart, maybe they make you useful, but that's, who needs that? Anyway, stay as far away as you can from engaged global storytelling. Far away. Trust me, you won't regret it. Uh, maybe you will. I don't care, I'm not real anyway. None of us. You're fake. You're fake. Hey kid, you're fake.